Did you know that you are a chosen person? That's right. The Lord has chosen you. And he hasn't chosen you because you look pretty or because of the way that he shaped your nose or because he was looking out amongst the people and thought, oh, that one, willy-nilly. That's not how God chooses. God chooses a lot more like a team captain who knows the people that he's picking from. He has seen the decisions that you make, the skills that you have, and the way that you use them. And he's chosen you because he likes you, what's inside of you. Isn't that wonderful? In today's message, we're going to be talking a little bit about Torah. I know that that rubs some people the wrong way, but it is in our Bibles, yes? And we are taught not to throw it out, but it's there and it's important. So instead of ignoring it, let's look at it objectively. A lot of people think that the Torah is barbaric. The system of laws in Torah is barbaric. Well, if that's the case, that means that the Lord chose a bunch of Egyptians, barbarians basically, and then gave them a law of barbarism to follow. We know that that's not true. We know that the Jews and Israel is not barbaric. So, in short, I'm going to, show, I'm going to give you one uh, good, solid, logical example as to uh, how you can see that the law is not barbaric. A lot of times we think that the law is barbaric because it has a death penalty, right? Well, let's look at that death penalty. So back in the day, the way that the community of Israel, if they were following God's law properly and the judges were all in place and people brought their disputes, they didn't settle them themselves. A big dispute or a, a bit, a, some, a, the death penalty is a big dispute. It wasn't like, oh, I'm just going to go stone this person because I, that's not how it worked. There were judges in place and you brought the offender to the authorities. And what the authority would do is he would need to have two witnesses. And there were only 13 things in Torah that could be done uh, to require the death penalty of the community upon that person. Let's look at those. There's millions of things that you could be doing. You could be writing. You could be throwing a ball around. You could be herding sheep. You could be running a mile. You could be uh, tying knots. You could be making thread. You could be playing tag with your friends. The list goes on and on and on. There's literally millions of things that you can do with the time that you have. And only 13 of all of those creative millions of things could get you killed. And not only are there only 13 of them, but two people have to catch you doing it. There has to be two eyewitnesses of you doing it. So those 13 things requiring the death penalty in God's eyes must be absolutely horrifically evil. And you have to be doing it in a way where two people see you doing it. So let's say murdering somebody, that's one thing. You can't murder people. So if you murder somebody and nobody catches you, Everybody kind of knows that you did it, but nobody sees you doing it. By God's law, there's nothing really that can be done in terms of human intervention and judgment. You have to be murdering somebody and two people who are willing to testify against you have to see you doing it. So that's just one example of how uh, the Torah did not raise up a group of barbarians, but instead was a logical system that our Father was using to help guide a group of very lost, basically Egyptians, they were Egyptians coming out of Egypt, to a group of people who have morals and values that he can look upon and choose and say, you, you are mine. I love you. 